Letter six of the Mirror of Kong Ho by Ernest Brahma. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Letter six concerning this person's well sustained efforts to discover further demons, the behavior of those invoked on two occasions. Venerated sire, in an early letter I made some reference to a variety of demon invoked by certain of the barbarians as this matter aroused your congenial interest i have since privately bent my mind incessantly to the discovery of others but this has been by no means easy for touching the more intimate details of the subject the barbarians frequently maintain a narrow-minded suspicion many whom i have approached feign to become amused or have evaded a deliberate answer under the subterfuge of a jest yet whenever i would have lurked by night in their temples or among the enclosed spaces of their tombs to learn more at a given signal one in authority has approached me with anxiety and mistrust engraved upon his features and disregarding my unassuming protest that i would remain alone in a contemplative reverie has signified that so devout an exercise is contrary to their written law on one occasion only did this person seem to hold himself poised on the very edge of a fuller enlightenment this was when in the venerable company of several benevolent persons he was being taken from place to place to see the more important buildings and to observe the societies of artificers laboring at their crafts the greater part of the day had already been spent in visiting temples open spaces reserved to children and those whose speech appearance and general manner of behaving make it desirable that they should be set apart from the contact of the impressionable halls containing relics and emblems of the past places of no particular size or attraction but described as being of unparalleled historic interest and the stalls of the more reputable vendors of merchandise doubtless with observing so many details of a conflicting nature this person's discriminating faculties had become obscured but towards evening he certainly understood that we sought the company of an assembly of those who had been selected from all the empire to pronounce definitely upon matters of supreme import the building before which our chariot stopped had every appearance of being worthy of so exceptional a gathering and with the most affluent joy that i should at last be able to glean a decisive pronouncement i evaded those who had accompanied me and mingling self-reliantly with the throng inside i quickly surrounded myself with many of the wisest looking and begged that they would open their heads freely and express their innermost opinions upon the subject of demons of all kinds although i had admittedly hoped that these persons would not conceal themselves behind the wings of epigram or intangible prevarication i was far from being prepared for the candour with which they greeted me and although by long usage i am reasonably unconcerned at the proximity of any of our own recognized genii it is not to be denied that my organs of ferocity grew small and unstable at the revelations from their words it appeared that the spot on which we stood had long been the recognized centre and meeting-place for every class of abandoned and objectionable spirit of the universe not only this but several of the persons who had gathered around were confidently pointed out as the earthly embodiment of various diabolical forces while others cheerfully admitted that they themselves were the shadows of certain illustrious ones who had long passed above and all united in declaring that those who moved among them wearing the distinction of a dark blue uniform were evil beings of a most ghoulish and repulsive type indeed as i looked more closely i could see that not only those pointed out but all standing around had expressions immeasurably more in keeping with a band of outcast spirits than suggestive of an assembly representing wisdom and dignified ease at that moment however a most inelegant movement was caused by one suddenly declaring that he had recognized this one 
who is inscribing his experiences to be the apparition of a certain great reformer who during the period of his ordinary existence had received the name of guy fox and amid a tumult of overwhelming acclamation a proposal was raised that i should be carried around in triumph and afterwards initiated into the observance of a time-honoured custom although it had now become doubtful to what end the adventure was really tending this person would have submitted himself agreeably to the participation had not the blue apparelled band cleft their way into the throng just as i was about to be borne off in triumph and forming themselves into a ringed barrier around me they presently succeeded in rearranging the contending elements and in restoring me to the society of my friends to these persons they complained with somewhat unreasoning acrimony that i had been exciting the inmates into a state of rebellion with wild imaginings and for the first time i then began to understand that an important error had been perpetuated by some one and that instead of being a meeting-place for those upholding the wisdom and authority of the country the building was in reality an establishment for the mentally defective and those of treacherous instincts for some time after this occurrence i failed to regard the subject of demons and allied forces in any but a spirit of complete no enthusiasm but more recently my interest and research have been enlarged by the zeal and supernatural conversation of a liberal-minded person who sought my prosaic society with indefatigable persistence when we had progressed to such a length that the one might speak of affairs without the other at once interposing that he himself had also unfortunately come out quite destitute of money this stranger who revealed to me that his name was glitter but that in the company of a certain chosen few he was known intimately as the keeper of the salagrama approached me confidentially and inquired whether we of our central kingdom were in the habit of receiving manifestations from the spirits of those who had passed beyond at the unassumed ingenuousness of this remark i suffered my impassiveness to relax as i replied with well-established pride that although a country which neglected its ancestors might doubtless be able to produce more of the ordinary or graveyard spectres we were unapproachable for the diverse forms and malignant enmity of our apparitions of invisible beings alone i continued tolerantly we had the distinction of being harassed by upwards of seven hundred clearly defined varieties while the commoner inflictions of demons shades visions warlocks phantoms sprites imps phenomena ghosts and reflections passed almost without comment and touching our admitted national specialty of dragons the honour of supremacy had never been questioned at this the agreeable person said that the pleasure he derived from meeting me was all excelling and that i must certainly accompany him to a meeting-place of this same chosen few the following evening when by the means of sacred expedients they hoped to invoke the presence of some departed spirits and perchance successfully raise a tangible vision or two to so fair-minded a proposal i held myself acquiescently and then inquired where the meeting-place in question was destined to be whether in a ruined and abandoned sanctuary or upon some precipitous spot of desolation the inquiry was gracefully intended but a passing cloud of unworthy annoyance revealed itself upon the upper part of the other's expression as he replied we the true seekers despise theatrical accessories and as a matter of fact i couldn't well get away from the office in time to go anywhere far to-morrow we meet at my place in the camden road it's only a three halfpenny tram stage from the euston and tottenham court corner so it couldn't be much more convenient for you he thereupon gave me an inscribed fragment of paper and mentioned the appointed hour i'll tell you why i am particularly anxious for you to come to-morrow he said as we were each departing from one another 
Posh, he's the reader of the Veda among us, and his people have got hold of a Greek woman, they say she is a princess, of course, who can do a lot of things with flowers and plate glass. They are bringing her for the first time to-morrow, and it struck me that if I have you there already when they arrive, you'll come in your national costume, by the way, it will be a considerable set-off. Since his daughter was presented to the Duchess at the opening of a bazaar, there has been no holding Pash. Why he was ever elected reader of the books, I don't know. Uh, we have had scoffers sometimes, but I trust I may rely upon you not to laugh at anything you may not happen to agree with. With conscientious dignity I replied that I had only really laughed seven times in my life, and therefore the entertainment was one which I was not likely to embark upon hastily or with inadequate cause. He immediately expressed a seemly regret that the detail had been spoken, and again assuring him that at the stated hour I would present myself at the house bearing the symbol engraved upon the card, we definitely parted that as a matter of fact i did not so present myself at the exact hour chiefly concerned the uncouth and arbitrary-minded charioteer who controlled the movements of the vehicle to which the one whom i was seeking had explicitly referred for at an angle in the road he suffered the horses to draw us aside into a path which did not correspond to the engraved signs upon the card nor by any word of persuasion could he be prevailed upon to return. Thus, without any possible reproach upon the manner in which I was conducting the enterprise, it came about that by the time I reached the spot indicated, all those persons who had been spoken of as constituting a chosen band were assembled, and with them the barbarian princess. Nevertheless, this person was irreproachably greeted, and the maiden indicated even spoke a few words to him in an outside tongue. Being necessarily unacquainted with the import of the remark, I spread out my hands with a sign of harmonious sympathy, and smiled agreeably, whereat she appeared to receive an added esteem from the faces of those around, excluding those directly of the house of glitter and was thereby encouraged to speak similarly at intervals, this person each time replying in a like fashion. "'Is he then a guide of the way also, princess?' said the one Pash, who had noted the occurrence, to which the maiden replied, "'To a degree, yet lacking the innermost mysteries.' Presently it was announced that all things were fittingly prepared in another chamber. Here, upon a table of polished wood, stood on the one side a round stone with certain markings, a group of inscribed books, and various other emblems, and on the other side a bowl of water, a sphere of crystal, pieces of unwritten parchment, and behind all, and at a distance away, a sheet of transparent glass, greater in height than an ordinary person, and as wide. When all were seated, the one who had enticed me among them, placing himself before the stone, the person Pash guarding the books, the barbarian princess being surrounded by her symbols and alone in a self-imposed solitude, and the others at various points, the lights were subdued and the appearances awaited it would be scarcely respectful o oh my enlightened father to take up your well-spent leisure by a too prolific account of the matters which followed they being in no way dissimilar from the manifestations by which the uninitiated little ones of young ping are wont to amuse themselves and pass the winter evenings from time to time harmonious sounds could be plainly detected flowers and branches of wood were scattered sparsely here and there persons claimed that passing objects had touched their faces and misshapen forms of smoke-like density which some confidently recognized as the outlines of departed ones whom they had known revealed themselves against the glass when this had been accomplished the lights were recalled and the barbarian maiden sinking into a condition of languor 
announced and foretold events and happenings upon which she was consulted sometimes replying by spoken words at others suffering her hand to trace them lightly upon the parchment sheets thus to an inquirer it was announced that one aunt mary in the upper air was well and happy though undeniably pained at the action of cousin william in the matter of the freehold houses and more than sceptical how his marriage would turn out another was advised that although the interest on consoles was admittedly lower than that anticipated by those controlling the destinies of a new venture entitled the great rosy dawn gold mine development syndicate and the name certainly less poetically inspiring the advising spirits were of the opinion that the former enterprise would prove the more stable of the two and in any case they recommended the person in question to begin by placing not more than half of her life savings into the mine the family of the house of pash was assured that beneficial spirits surrounded them at every turn and that their good deeds were not suffered to fall unfruitfully to the ground while many bearing the name of glitter on the other hand were reproved by one who had known them in infancy for the offences of jealousy ostentation vain thoughts shallowness of character and the like at length revered as there seemed to be no reasonable indication of any barbarian phantom of weight or authority appearing nothing indeed beyond what a person in our country of no admitted skill would accomplish in the penetrating light of day with two others holding his hands and a third reposing upon his head i formed the perhaps immature judgment that the one to whom i was indebted for the entertainment would be suffering a grievous frustration of his hopes and a diminution of his outward authority therefore without sufficient consideration of the restricted surroundings as it afterwards appeared i threw myself into a retrospective vision and floating unencumbered through space i sought for quan king ti the demon of the waters upon whom i might fittingly call as i was given into his keeping by the ceremony of spirit adoption at an early age meeting an influence which i recognized to be an indication of his presence in the vicinity of the eighth region i obsequiously entreated that he would reveal himself without delay and then convinced of his sympathetic intervention i suffered my spirit to recall itself and revived into the condition of an ordinary existence we have among us this evening my friends the one pash was saying a very remarkable lady if i may use so democratic a term in the connection to whom the limits of time and space are empty words and before whose supreme will the most portentous forces of occult nature mutely confess themselves her attending slaves but at that moment the rolling drums of kang ti's thunder drowned his words although he subsequently raised his voice above it to entreat that any knives or other articles of a bright and attractive kind should at once be removed to a place of safety heralded by these continuous sounds and accompanied by innumerable flashes of lightning the genius presently manifested himself leisurely developing out of the air around he appeared in his favorite guise of an upright dragon his scales being arranged in rows of nine each way a pearl showing within his throat and upon his head the wooden bar the lights were extinguished incapably by the rain which fell continually in his presence but from his body there proceeded a luminous breath which sufficiently revealed the various incidents kong ho said this opportune vision speaking with a voice like the beating of a brass gong the course you have adopted is an unusual one but the weight and regularity of your offerings have merit in my eyes nevertheless if your invocation is only the outcome of a shallow vanity or a profane love of display nothing can save you from a painful death speak now fully and without evasion and fear nothing amiable being said this person kowtowing profoundly the matter was designed to the end only that your incomparable versatility might be fittingly displayed 
these barbarians sought vainly to raise phantoms capable of any useful purpose whereupon i jealous of your superior omnipotence judged it would be an unseemly neglect not to inform you of the opportunity it is well said the demon affably all doubt in the matter shall now be put to rest could any more convincing act be found than that i should breathe upon these barbarians and reduce them instantly to a scattering of thin white ashes assuredly it would be a conclusive testimony i replied yet in that case consider how inadequate a witness would be borne to your enlightened condescension when none would be left but one to whom the spoken language of this island is more in the nature of a trap than a comfortable vehicle your reasoning is profound kong ho he replied yet abundant proof shall not be wanting with these words he raised his hand and immediately the air became filled with an overwhelming shower of those productions with which quang ki ti's name is chiefly associated shells and pebbles of all kinds lotus and other roots from the river banks weeds from seas of greater depths fish of interminable variety from both fresh and bitter waters all falling in really embarrassing abundance and mingled with an incessant rain of sand and water in the midst of this the demon suddenly passed away striking the table as he went so that it was scarred with the brand of a five-clawed hand shattering all the objects upon it excepting the stone and the books which he doubtless regarded as sacred to some extent and leaving the room involved in a profound darkness for the love of the saints for the love of the saints save us from the yellow devils exclaimed a voice from the spot where last the barbarian princess had reclined and upon this person going to her assistance with lights it was presently revealed that she alone had remained seated the others having all assembled themselves beneath the table in spite of the incapability of the space at their disposal most of the weightier evidence of quang kian ti's majestic presence had faded away though the table retained the print of his impressive hand many objects remained irretrievably torn apart and in a distant corner of the room an insignificant heap of shells and seaweed still lingered from the floor covering a sprinkling of the purest fu chow sand rose at every step the salt dew of the tong hai still dropped from the surroundings and at a later period a shore crab was found endeavouring to make its escape undetected convinced that the success of the manifestation would have enlarged the one glitter's esteem towards me to an inexpressible degree i now approached him with words of self-deprecation ready on my tongue but before he spoke i became aware from the nature of his glance that the provision had been unnecessary for already his face had begun to assume to a most distended amount the expression which i had long recognized as a synonym that some detail had been regarded at a different angle from that anticipated may i ask he began in a somewhat heavily laden voice after he had assured himself that the person who was speaking was himself and his external attributes unchanged may i ask sir and at this title which is untranslatable in its many-sided significance when technically employed i recognized that all complimentary intercourse might be regarded as having closed whether you accept the responsibility of these proceedings touching the appearance which has so essentially contributed to the success of the occasion it is undeniably due to this one's foresight i replied modestly then let me tell you sir that i consider it an outrage a dastardly outrage yet protested this person with retiring assertiveness the expressed object of the ceremony as it stood before my intelligence was for the set purpose of invoking spirits and raising certain visions spirits exclaimed the one before me with an accent of concentrated aversion yes spirits impalpable civilized genuine spirits who manifest themselves through recognized media and are conformable to the usages of the best drawing-room society yes but not demons sir 
not chinese devils in the camden road no truth and light at any cost not paganism it's certainly scandalous look at the mahogany table ruined look at the wallpaper conventional mackerels with a fishing net background new this spring soused look at the brussels carpet seventeen six by twenty five saturated i quite agree with you mr glitter here interposed the individual pash i was watching you sir closely the whole time and i have my suspicions about how it was done i don't know whether mr glitter has any legal redress but i should certainly advise him to see his solicitors to-morrow and in the meantime he is my guest exclaimed the one whose hospitality i was enjoying and while he is beneath my roof he is sacred but i do not think that it would be kind to detain him any longer in his wet things said another of the household with pointed malignity and accepting this as an omen of departure i withdrew myself bowing repeatedly but offering no closer cordiality through a torn sleeve one drops a purse of gold it is well said and as if to prove to a deeper end that misfortune is ever double-handed this incapable being involved in thoughts of funereal density bent his footsteps to an inaccurate turning and after much wandering was compelled to pass the night upon a desolate heath but that would be the matter of another narrative with an insidious doubt whether after all the far-seeing quang kian ti's first impulse would not have been the most satisfactory conclusion to the enterprise kong ho end of letter six letter seven of the mirror of kong ho by ernest brahma this librivox recording is in the public domain letter seven concerning warfare both as waged by ourselves and by a nation devoid of true civilization the aged man and the meeting and the parting of our ways the instance of the one who expressed emotion by leaping venerated sire you are omniscient and i cannot regard the fear which you express in your beautifully written letter bearing the sign of the eleventh day of the seventh moon as anything more than the imaginings prompted by a too lavish supper of your favourite shark's fin and peanut oil unless the dexterously elusive attributes of the genial spoken persons high in office at pekin have deteriorated contemptibly since this one's departure it is quite impossible for our great and enlightened empire to be drawn into a conflict with the northern barbarians whom you indicate against our will when the matter becomes urgent doubtless a prince of the imperial line will loyally suffer himself to pass above and during the period of ceremonial mourning for so pure and exalted an official it would indeed be an unseemly desecration to engage in any public business if this failed and an ultimatum were pressed with truly savage contempt for all that is sacred and refined it might be well next to consider the health even of the sublime emperor himself or perhaps better that of the select and ever-present dowager empress but should the barbarians still advance and setting the usages of civilized warfare at defiance threaten an engagement in the midst of this unparalleled calamity there will be no alternative but to have a formidable rebellion in the capital all the barbarian powers will then assemble as usual and in the general involvement none dare move alone and everything will have to be regarded as being put back to where it was before it is well said the broken vessel can never be made whole but it may be delicately arranged so that another shall displace it these barbarians less resourceful in device have only recently emerged from a conflict into which they do not hesitate to admit they were drawn despite their protests such incompetence is characteristic of their methods throughout not in any way disguising their purpose they at once sent out an army of those whom could be the readiest seized certainly furnishing them with weapons 
charms to use in case of emergency, and three colored standards, their adversaries adopting a white banner to symbolize the conciliation of their attitude, and displaying both freely in every extremity but utterly neglecting to teach them the arts of painting their bodies with all inspiring forms of imitating the cries of wild animals as they attacked of clashing their weapons together with menacing vigor or any of the recognized artifices of, by which terror may be struck into the ranks of an awaiting foeman the result was that which the prudent must have foreseen the more accomplished enemy without exposing themselves to any unnecessary inconvenience gained many advantages by their intrepid power of dissimulation arranging their garments and positions in such a way that they had the appearance of attacking when in reality they were effecting a prudent retreat rapidly concealing themselves among the earth on the approach of an overwhelming force becoming openly possessed with the prophetic vision of an assured final victory whenever it could be no longer concealed that matters were becoming very desperate indeed and gaining an effective respite when all other ways of extrication were barred against them by the stratagem of feigning that they were other than those whom they had at first appeared to be in the meantime the adventure was not progressing pleasantly for those chiefly concerned at home with the earliest tidings of repulse it was discovered that in the haste of embarkation the wrong persons had been sent all those who were really the fittest to command remaining behind and many of these did not hesitate to write to the printed papers resolutely admitting that they themselves were in every way better qualified to bring the expedition to a successful end at the same time skilfully pointing out how the disasters which those in the field had incurred could easily have been avoided by acting in a precisely contrary manner in the emergency the most far-seeing recommended a more unbending policy of extermination among these one in particular a statesman bearing an illustrious name of two-edged import distinguished himself by the liberal broad-mindedness of his opinions and for the time he even did not flinch from making himself excessively unpopular by the wide and sweeping variety of his censure we are confessedly a barbarian nation fearlessly declared this unprejudiced person who although entitled by hereditary right to carry a banner on the field of battle with patriotic self-effacement preferred to remain at home and encourage those who were fighting by pointing out their inadequacy to the task and the extreme unlikelihood of their ever accomplishing it and in order to achieve our purpose speedily it is necessary to resort to the methods of barbarism the most effective measure as he proceeded to explain with well thought out detail would be to capture all those least capable of resistance concentrate them into a given camp and then at an agreed signal reduce the entire assembly to what he termed in a passage of high-minded eloquence a smoking hecatomb of women and children his advice was well pointed with a crafty insight for not only would such a course have brought the stubborn enemy to a realization of the weakness of their position and thus paved the way to a dignified peace but by the act itself few would have been left to hand down the tradition of a relentless antagonism yet with incredible obtuseness his advice was ignored and he himself was referred to at the time by those who regarded the matter from a different angle with a scarcely veiled dislike which towards many of his followers took the form of building materials and other dissensual messages whenever they attempted to raise their voices publicly as an inevitable result the conquest of the country took years where it would have been moons had the more truly humane policy been adopted commerce and the arts languished and in the end so little spoil was taken that it was more common to meet six mendicants wearing the honourable embellishment of the campaign than to see one captured slave maiden offered for sale in the market-places indeed even to this day the deficiency is clearly admitted and openly referred to as the great domestic problem 
At various times during my residence here I have been filled with a most acute gratification when the words of those around have seemed to indicate that they recognize the undoubted superiority of the laws and institutions of our enlightened country. Sometimes, it is true, upon a more detailed investigation of the incident, it has presently appeared that either I had misunderstood the exact nature of their sentiments, or they had slow-wittedly failed to grasp the precise operation of the enactment I had described. But these exceptions are clearly the outcome of their superficial training, and do not affect the way my feeble and frequently even eccentric arguments are at length certainly moving the more intelligent into an admission of what constitutes true justice and refinement. It is not to be denied that here and there exists a prejudice against our customs, even in the minds of the studious but as this is invariably the shadow of misconception, it has frequently been my sympathetic privilege to promote harmony by means of the inexorable logic of fact and reason. But are not your officials uncompromisingly opposed to the freedom of the press? said one who conversed with me on the varying phases of the two country, and knowing that in his eyes this would constitute an unendurable offence, i at once appeased his mind by no means i replied if anything the exact contrary is the case as a matter of reality of course there is no press now the all-seeing board of censors having wisely determined that it was not stimulating to the public welfare but if such an institution was permitted to exist you may rest genially assured that nothing could exceed the lenient toleration which all in office would extend towards it a similar instance of malicious inaccuracy is widely spoken of regarding our lesser ones is it really a fact mr kong exclaimed a maiden of magnanimous condescension to this person recently that we poor women are despised in your country and that among the working classes female children are even systematically abandoned as soon as they are born suffering my features to express amusement at this unending calumny i indicated my violent contempt towards the one who had first uttered it so far from despising them i continued with ingratiating gallantry we recognize that they are quite necessary for the purposes of preparing our food carrying weighty burdens and the like and how grotesque an action would be for poor but affectionate parents to abandon one who in a few years time could be sold at a really remunerative profit this indeed being the principal means of sustenance in many frugal families on another occasion i had seated myself upon a wooden couch in one of the open spaces about the outskirts of the city when an aged man chanced to pass by him i saluted with ceremonious politeness on account of his years and the venerable dignity of his beard thereupon he approached near and remarking affably that the afternoon was good though to use no subtle evasion it was very evil he congenially sat by my side and entered into familiar discourse they say that in your part of the world we old grandfathers are worshipped he said after recounting to my ears all the most intimate details of his existence from his youth upwards now might that be true truly i replied it is the unchanging foundation of our system of morality ay ay he admitted pleasantly we are a long way behind them furriners and everything at the rate we're going there won't be any trade nor work nor religion left in this country in another twenty years i often wish i'd gone abroad when i was younger and if i had chanced upon your parts i should be worshipped eh and at the agreeable thought the aged man laughed in his throat with a simple humour assuredly i replied after you were dead ah huh? exclaimed the venerable person checking the fountain of his mirth abruptly at the word dead not before doesn't doesn't that seem a bit of waste such has been the observance from the time of unrecorded antiquity i replied 
obey parents respect the old loyally uphold the sovereign and worship ancestors well well remarked the one beside me obedience and respect that's something nowadays and you make them do it our laws are unflinching in their application i said no crime is held to be more detestable than disrespect of those to whom we owe our existence quite right he agreed it's a pleasure to hear it it must be a great country yours a country with a future i should say now about that youngest lad of my son henry's the one that drops pet lizards down my neck and threatened to put rat poison into his mother's tea when she wouldn't take him to the military tournament what would they do to him by your laws if the assertion were well sustained by competent witnesses i replied it would probably be judged so execrable an offence that a new punishment would have to be contrived failing that he would certainly be wrapped around from head to foot in red-hot chains and thus exposed to public derision oh red-hot chains said the aged person as though the words formed a pleasurable taste upon his palate the young beggar well he'll deserve it furthermore i continued gratified at having found one who so intelligently appreciated the deficiencies of his own country and the unblemished perfection of ours his parents and immediate descendants if any should exist would be submitted to a fate as inevitable but slightly less contemptuous slow compression perchance his parents once removed thus enclosing your venerable personality and remoter offspring would be merely put to the sword without further ignominy and those of less kinship to about the fourth degree would doubtless escape with branding and a reprimand lord help us exclaimed the patriarchal one hastily leaping to the extreme limit of the wooden couch and grasping his staff into a significant attitude of defence what's that for our system of justice is all-embracing i explained it is reasonably held that in such a case either that there is an inherent strain of criminality which must be eradicated at all hazard or else that those who are responsible for the virtuous instruction of the young have been grossly neglectful of their duty whichever is the true cause by this unfailing method we reach the desired end for as our proverb aptly says do the wise pluck the weed and leave the roots to spread it's butchery nothing short of smithfield said the ancient person definitely rising and moving to a more remote distance as he spoke the words yet never for a moment relaxing the aggressive angle at which he thrust out his staff before him you're a bloodthirsty race in my opinion and when they get this door open in china that there's so much talk about out you go through it my lad or old england will know why with this narrow-minded imprecation on his lips he left me not even permitting me to continue expounding what would be the most likely sentences meted out to the witnesses in the case the dwellers of the same street the members of the household with whom the youth in question had contemplated forming an alliance among the many contradictions which really almost seem purposely arranged to entrap the unwary in this strangely underside up country is the fact that while the ennobled and those of high official rank are courteous in their attitude and urbane frequently even to the extent of refusing money from those whom they have obliged no matter how privately pressed upon them the low caste and slavish are not only deficient in obsequiousness but are permitted to retort openly to those who address them with fitting dignity here such a state of things is too general to excite remark but as instances are well called the flowers of the tree of assertion this person will set forth the manner in which he was contumaciously opposed by an oblique-eyed outcast who attended within the stall of one selling wrought gold jewels and merchandise of the finer sort 
being desirous of procuring a gift wherewith to propitiate a certain maiden's esteem and seeing above a shop of varied attraction a suspended sign emblematic of three times repeated guild abundance i drew near not doubting to find beneath so auspicious a token the fulfilment of an honourable accommodation inside the window was displayed one of the implements by which the various details of a garment are joined together upon turning a wheel hung about with an inscription setting forth that it was esteemed at the price of two units of gold nineteen pieces of silver and eleven and three-quarters of the brass cash of the land and judging that no more suitable object could be procured for the purpose i entered the shop and desired the attending slave to submit it to my closer scrutiny behold i exclaimed when i had made a feint of setting the device into motion for it need not be concealed from you o discreet one that i was really inadequate to the attempt and indeed narrowly escaped impaling myself upon its sudden and unexpected protrusions the highly burnished surface of your dexterously arranged window gave to this engine a rich attractiveness which is altogether lacking at a closer examination nevertheless this person will not recede from a perhaps too impulsive offer of one unit of gold three pieces of silver and four and a half brass cash my object of course being that after the mutual recrimination of disparagement and overpraise we should in the length of an hour or two reach a becoming compromise in the middle distance well responded the menial one regarding me with an expression in which he did not even attempt to subdue the baser emotions you have come a long way for nothing and he made a pretence of wishing to replace the object yet i continued observe with calm impartiality how insidiously the rust has assailed the outer polish of the lacquer perceive here upon the beneath part of wood the ineffaceable depression of a deeply pointed blow note well the it was good enough for you to want me to muck up out of the window wasn't it demanded the obstinate barbarian becoming passionate in his bearing rather than reluctantly but with a courteous grace lessening the price to a trifling degree as we regard the proper way of carrying on the enterprise it is well said i admitted hoping that he might yet learn wisdom from my attitude of unruffled urbanity though i feared that his angle of negotiating was unconquerably opposed to mine but now its many imperfections are revealed the inelegance of its outline the grossness of the applied colours the unlucky combination of numbers engraved upon this plate the damn cried the utterly perverse rebel standing opposite why don't you keep on your compound you yellow peril who asked you to come into my shop to blackguard the things come now who did assuredly it is your place of commerce i replied cheerfully preparing to bring forward an argument which in our country never fails to shake the most stubborn yet bend your eyes to the fact that at no great distance away there stands another and a more alluring stall of merchandise where go to it then screamed the abandoned outcast leaping over his counter and shouting aloud in a frenzy of uncontrollable rage clear out or i'll bend my feet but concluding at this point that some private calumny from which he was doubtless suffering was disturbing his mind to so great an extent that there was little likelihood of our bringing the transaction to a profitable end i left the shop immediately but with befitting dignity with a well-founded assurance that you will now be acquiring a pretty precise and bird's-eye like insight into practically all phases of this country kong ho End of letter seven. Letter eight of the Mirror of Kong Ho by Ernest Brahma. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Letter eight concerning the wisdom of the sublime Wei Chung and its application to the ordinary problems of existence. 
the meeting of three hitherto unknown to each other about a wayside inn and their various manners of conducting the enterprise venerated sire you will doubtless remember the behavior of the aged philosopher wei chung when commanded by the broad-minded emperor of his time to reveal the hidden sources of his illimitable knowledge so that all might freely acquire and the race thereby become raised to a position of unparalleled excellence taking the well-disposed sovereigns familiarly by the arm wei chung led him to the mouth of his cave in the forest and standing by his side bade him reflect with open eyes for a short space of time and then express aloud what he had seen nothing of grave import declared the emperor when the period was accomplished only the trees shaken by the breeze it is enough replied wei chung what to the adroitly balanced mind does such a sight reveal that it is certainly a windy day exclaimed the omnipotent triumphantly for although admittedly divine he yet lacked the philosopher's discrimination on the contrary replied the sage coldly that is the natural pronouncement of the rankly superficial to the highly trained intellect it conveys the more subtle truth that the wind affects the trees and not the trees affect the wind for upwards of seventy years this one has daily stood at the door of his cave for a brief period and regularly garnered a single detail of like brilliance has made it the wellspring for a day's reflection as the result he now has by heart upwards of twenty five thousand useful facts all serviceable for original proverbs and an encyclopedic mind which would enable him to take a high place in a popular competition unassisted by a single work of reference much impressed by the adventure the charitably inclined emperor presented wei chung with an onyx crown which the philosopher at once threw into an adjacent well and returning to his capital published a decree that each day at sunrise every person should stand at the door of his dwelling and after observing for a period compare among themselves the details of their thoughts by this means he hoped to achieve his imperial purpose but although the literal part of the enactment is scrupulously maintained especially by the slothful and defamatory who may be seen standing at their doors and conversing together even to this day from some unforeseen imperfection the intellectual capacity of the race has remained exactly as it was before nevertheless it is not to be questioned that the system of the versatile wei chung was in itself grounded upon a far-seeing accuracy and as the need of such a rational observation is deepened among the inconsistencies and fantastic customs of a barbarian race i have made it a useful habit to accept as a guide for the day's behaviour the reflections engendered by the first noteworthy incident of the morning upon the day with which this letter concerns itself i had set forth in accordance with an ever-present desire to explore some of the hidden places of the city at the time a tempest of great ferocity was raging and bending my head before it i had the distinction of coming into contact with a person of ill-endowed exterior at an angle where two heads met this amiable wayfarer exchanged civilities with me after the politeness characteristic of the laboring classes towards those who differ from them in speech dress or colour that is to say he filled his pipe from my proffered store and after lighting it threw the match into my face and passed on with an appropriate remark doubtless this insignificant occurrence would have faded without internal comment if the penetrating wei chung had never existed but now guided by his sublime precedent i arranged the incident for the day's conduct under three reflective heads it was while i was meditating on the second of these that an exclamation caused me to turn when i observed a prosperously outlined person in the act of picking up a scrip which had the appearance of being lavishly distended with pieces of gold 
if i had not seen you pass it i should have opined that this here wallet belonged to you remarked the justice-loving stranger for the incident had irresistibly retarded my own footsteps speaking the language of this land but with an accent of penetrating harmony hitherto unknown to my ears with these auspicious words he turned over the object upon his hand doubtfully so entrancing a possibility is as you gracefully suggest of unavoidable denial i replied nevertheless this person will not hesitate to join his acclamation with yours for as the book of verses wisely says even the blind if truly polite will extol the prospect from your housetop that's so admitted the one by my side but i don't know that there is any call for a special thanksgiving as i happen to have more money of my own than i can reasonably spend i shall drop this in at a convenient police station i dare say some poor critter is pining away for it now pleasantly impressed by the resolute benevolence of the one who had a greater store of wealth than he could by his own unaided efforts dispose of i arranged myself unobtrusively at his side and maintaining an exhibition of my most polished and genial conversation i sought to penetrate deeply into his esteem gaze in this direction kong he said at length calling me by name with auspicious familiarity i am a benighted stranger in this yar city and so are you i reckon suppose we liquor up and then take a few of the side shows together the suggestion is one against which i will erect no ill-disposed barrier i at once replied so inflexibly determined not to lose sight of a person possessing such engaging attributes as to be cheerfully prepared even to consume my rice spirit in the inverted position which his words implied if the display was persisted in nevertheless i added with a resourceful prudence although by no means undistinguished among the highest literary and competitive circles of his native yung pen the one before you is incapable of walking in the footsteps of a person whose accumulations are greater than he himself can appreciably diminish that's all right kong replied the one whom my last words fittingly described striking the recesses of his lower garment with a gesture of graceful significance when i take a fancy to any one it isn't a matter of dollars i usually carry a trifle of five hundred or a thousand pounds in my pocket-book and if we can get through that why there's plenty more waiting at the bank say though i hope you don't keep much about you it isn't really safe the temptation to do so is one which this person has hitherto successfully evaded i replied the contents of this reptile skin case and not to be outshone in mutual confidence i here displayed it openly do not exceed nine or ten pieces of gold and a like number of printed obligations promising to pay five pieces each put it away kong he said resolutely you won't need that so long as you're with me well now what sort of a saloon have we here as far as the opinion might be superficially expressed it had every indication of being one of noteworthy antiquity and to the innately modest mind its unassuming diffidence might have lent an added charm nevertheless on most occasions this person would have maintained an unshaken dexterity in avoiding its open door but as the choice admittedly lay in the hands of one who carried five hundred or a thousand pieces of gold we went in together and passed through to a compartment of retiring seclusion in our own land o oh my orthodox-minded father where the unfailing resources of innumerable bands of dragons spirits vampires ghouls shadows omens and thunderstorms are daily enlisted to carry into effect the pronouncements of an appointed destiny we have many historical examples of the inexorably converging legs of coincidence but none i think more impressively arranged than the one now descending this person's brush 
we had scarcely reposed ourselves and taken from the hands of an awaiting slave the vessels of thrice potent liquid which in this island is regarded as the indispensable accompaniment to every movement of existence when a third person entered the room and seating himself at a table some slightly removed distance away lowered his head and abandoned himself to a display of most lavish dejection that poor cuss doesn't appear to be holiday-making remarked the sincerely compassionate person at my side after closely observing the other for a period and then moved by the overpowering munificence of his inward nature he called aloud say stranger you seem to have it thickly in the neck is it family affliction or the whisky of the establishment at these affably intentioned words the stranger raised his eyes quickly with an indication of not having up to that time been aware of our presence sir he exclaimed approaching to a spot where he could converse with the more enhanced facility when i loosened the restraint of an overpowering if unmanly grief i imagined that i was alone for i would have shunned even the most flattering sympathy but your charitably modulated voice invites confidence the one before you is the most contemptible left-handed and disqualified outcast in creation and he is now making his way towards the river while his widow will be left to take in washing his infant son to bend evening printed leaves and his graceful and hitherto highly secluded daughters to go upon the stage say stranger interposed this person by no means unwilling to engrave upon his memory this newly acquired form of greeting the emotion is doubtless all pressing but in my ornate and flower-laden tongue we have a salutation slowly slowly walk slowly which seems to be of far-seeing application that's so remarked the one by my side separated with the teeth inch by inch i will be calm then continued the other who to avoid the complication of the intermingling circumstances may be described as the more stranger of the two and he took off his neckcloth i am a merchant in tea yellow fat and mixed spices in a small but hitherto satisfactory way thus revealing himself he continued to set forth how at an earlier hour he had started on a journey to deposit his wealth doubtless as a propitiation of outraged deities upon a certain bank and how upon reaching the specified point he discovered that what he carried had eluded his vigilance all gone notes gold and pocket-book the savings of a lifetime concluded the ill-omened one and at the recollection a sudden and even more highly sustained frenzy of self-unpopularity involving him without a pause he addressed himself by seven-and-twenty insulting expressions many of which were quite new to my understanding at the earliest mention of the details affecting the loss the elbow of the person who had made himself responsible for the financial obligation of the day propelled itself against my middle part and unseen by the other he indicated to me by means of his features that the entertainment was becoming one of agreeable prepossession now touching this here wallet he said presently how might you describe it in color it was red and within were two compartments the one containing three score notes each of ten pounds the other fifty pounds of gold but what's the use of describing it some lucky demon will pick it up and pocket the lot and i shall never see a cent of it again then you better consult one who reburnishes the eyes declared the magnanimous one with a laugh and drawing forth the article referred to he cast it towards the merchant in a small way at this point of the narrative my thoroughly incompetent brush confesses the proportions of the requirement to be beyond its most extended limit and many very honourable details are necessarily left without expression i've known men of all sorts good bad and bothwise exclaimed the one who had recovered his possessions but i never thought to meet a gent as would hand over six hundred and fifty pounds as if it was a toothpick sir it overbalances me it does indeed say no more about it 
urged the first person, and to suggest gracefully that the incident had reached its furthest extremity, he began to set out the melody of an unspoken verse. "'I will say no more, then,' he replied, "'but you cannot reasonably prevent my doing something to express my gratitude. If you are not too proud, you will come and partake of food and wine with me beneath the sign of the funereal male cow, and to show my confidence in you, I shall insist upon you carrying my pocket-book.' the person whom i had first encountered suffered his face to become excessively amused say stranger do you take me for a pack mule he replied good-naturedly i already have about as much as i want to handle never mind we'll come along with you and mr kong shall carry your bullion at this delicate and high-minded proposal a rapid change in no way complimentary to my explicit habit of adequately conducting any venture upon which i may be engaged came over the face of the second person sir he exclaimed i have nothing to say against this gentleman but i am under no obligation to him and i don't see why i should trust him with everything i possess stranger exclaimed the other rising to his feet and from this point it must be understood that the various details succeeded one another with a really agile dexterity let me tell you that mr kong is my friend and that ought to be enough it is if you say this gentleman is your friend and that you have known him long and intimately enough to be able to answer for him that's good enough for me well admitted the first person and i could not conceal from myself that his tone was inauspiciously reluctant i can't exactly say that i've known him long in fact i only met him half an hour ago but i have the fullest confidence in his integrity it's just as i expected well sir you're good-natured enough for anything but if you'll excuse me i must say that you're a small piece of an earthenware vessel after all the veiled allusion doubtless being that the vessel of necessity being broken the contents inevitably escape and i hope you're not being had i'm not and i'll prove it before we go out together retorted the engaging one who had in the meantime become so actively impetuous on my account that he did not remain content with the spoken words but threw the various belongings about as he mentioned them in a really profuse display of inimitable vehemence here kong take this here pocket-book whatever he says now on top of that take everything i've got and you know what that figures up to now give this gentleman your little lot to keep him quiet i don't ask for anything now stranger i'm ready you and i will take a stroll round the block and back again and if mr kong isn't waiting here for us when we return with everything intact and o k a y i'll double your deposit and never trust a dern soul again nodding genially over his shoulder with a harmonious understanding expressive of the fact that we were embarking upon an undeniably diverting episode the benevolent souled person who had accumulated more riches than he was competent to melt away himself passed out urging the doubtful and still protesting one before him thus abandoned to my own reflections i pondered for a short time profitably on the third head of the day's meditation touching the match and this person's unattractively lined face the revealed truth the inexperienced sheep cannot pass through the hedge without leaving portions of his wool and then finding the philosophy of wei chung very good i determined to remove the superfluous apprehensions of the vendor of foodstuffs with less delay by setting out and meeting them on their return a few paces distant from the door one of the ever-present watchers of the street was standing watching the street with unremitting vigilance while from the well-guarded expression of his face it might nevertheless be gathered that he stood as though in expectation prosperity i said with seasonable greeting for no excess of consideration is too great to be lavished upon these who unite within themselves the courage of a high warrior the expertness of a three-handed magician and the courtesy of a genial mandarin i seek to apparelled thus and thus did you by any chance mark the direction of their footsteps 
oh he said regarding this person with a most flattering application you seek them do you well they've just gone off in a hansom and they'll want a lot of seeking for the next week or two you let them carry your purse perhaps assuredly i replied as a mark of confidence this person for his part receiving a like token at their hands that's it said the official watcher conveying into his voice a subtle indication that he had become excessively fatigued it's like a nursery tale never too old to take with the kids well come along poor lamb the station isn't far so great had become the reliance which by this time i habitually reposed in these men that i never sought to oppose their pronouncements such a course being not only useless but undignified and we therefore together reached the place which the one by my side had described as a station from the outside the building was in no way imposing but upon reaching an inner dungeon it at once became plain that no matter with what crime a person might be charged even the most stubborn resistance would be unavailing before a fiercely burning fire were arranged metal pincers massive skewers ornamental branding irons and the usual accessories of the grill one tool being already thrust into the heart of the flame to indicate the nature of its use and its immediate readiness for the purpose pegs from which the accused could be hung by the thumbs with weights attached to the feet covered an entire wall chains shackling irons fetters steel rings for compressing the throat and belts for tightening the chest all had their appointed places while the chair the boot the heavy hat and many other appliances quite unknown to our system of administering justice were scattered about without pausing to select any of these the one who led me approached a raised desk at which was seated a less warlike official whose sympathetic appearance inspired confidence kong ho exclaimed to himself the person who is inscribing these words here is an individual into whose discriminating ear it would be well to pour the exact happening without evasion then even if the accusation against you be that of resembling another or trafficking with unlawful forces he will doubtless arrange the matter so that the expiation shall be as light and inexpensive as possible by this time certain other officials had drawn near what is it i heard one demand and another replied brooklyn ben and jimmy the butterman again ah they aren't artful are they but at this moment the two into whose power i had chiefly fallen having conversed together i was commanded to advance towards them and reveal my name kong i replied freely and i had formed a design to explain somewhat of the many illustrious ancestors of the house when the one at the desk pausing to inscribe my answer in a book spoke out kong he said is that the christian or surname surname replied this person between two thoughts undoubtedly the one before you is entitled by public examination to the degree recognized talent which may as a meritorious distinction be held equal to your title of a warrior clad in armour yet if it is so held that would rightly be this person's official name of pack oh it would would it said the one seated upon the high chair that's quite clear are there any other names as well assuredly i explained pained inwardly that one of official rank should so slightly esteem my appearance as to judge that i was so meagerly endowed the milk name of ho tsin upon entering the classes as a great name cheng another style in guanq the official title already expressed and chun li yun and nung as the various emergencies of life arise thank you said the high chair official courteously now just the name in full please without any velvet trimmings kong replied this person desirous above all things of putting the matter competently yet secretly disturbed as to what might be considered superfluous and what deemed a perfidious suppression ho tsin cheng kank hold hard cried this same one restraining me with an uplifted pen did you say quack quack 
repeated this person, beginning to become involved within himself, and not grasping the detail in the right position, in a manner of setting the expression forth, put him down quack duck sir exclaimed one of a dog-like dejection who stood by most of these lascars haven't got any real names they just go by what any one happens to call them at the time like burmese ike down at the mint and this person unfortunately chancing to smile and bow acquiescently at that moment not with any set intention but as a general principle of courteous urbanity in place of his really distinguished titles he will henceforth appear among the historical records of this dynasty under what he cannot disguise from his inner misgivings to be the low-caste appellation of quack duck now the address please continued the high one again preparing to inscribe the word and being determined that by no mischance should this particular be offensively reported i unhesitatingly replied beneath the sign of the lead tortoise on the northern course from the lotus pools outside the walls of yen ping this answer the one with the book did not immediately record i don't say it isn't all right when you know the parts he remarked broad-mindedly but it does sound a trifle irregular can't you give it a number and a street i fancy it must be a pub sir observed another he said that it had a sign the red tortoise well haven't you got a london address said the high one and this person being able to supply a street and a number as desired this part of the undertaking was disposed of to his cordial satisfaction now let me see the articles which these men left with you commanded the chieftain of the band and without any misleading discrepancies i at once drew forth from an inner sleeve the two scripts of which adequate mention has already been made another hitherto undescribed two instruments for measuring the passing hours of the day together with a chain of fine gold ingeniously wrought into the semblance of a cable an ornament for the breast set about with a jewel two neck claws of a kind usually carried in the pocket a book for recording happenings of any moment pieces of money to the value of about eleven tails a silver flagon a sheathed weapon and a few lesser objects of insignificant value these various details i laid obsequiously before the one who had commanded it while the others stood around either in explicit silence or speaking softly beneath their breath do i understand that the two persons left all these things with you while they took your purse in exchange said the high official after examining certain obscure signs upon the metals the contents of the third script and the like it cannot reasonably be denied i replied inasmuch as they departed without them spontaneously he demanded and in spite of the unevadable severity of his voice the expression of his nearer eye deviated somewhat the spoken and conclusive word of the first was that it was his intention to commit to this one's keeping everything which he had the assertion of the second being that with this scrip i received all that he possessed while of yours what did they get mr quack and the tone of the one who spoke had a much more gratifying modulation than before while the attitudes of those who stood around had favourably changed until they now conveyed a message of deliberate esteem a serpent skin case of two enclosures i replied on the one side was a hand account of the small copper pieces of this island which i had caused to be burnished and gilt for the purpose of taking back to amuse those of yen ping on the other side were two or three pages from a gravity-removing printed leaf entitled bits of tits with which this person weakly instructs himself in the simpler rudiments of the language for the rest the case was controlled by a hidden spring and inscribed about with a charm against loss consumption by fire or being secretly acquired by the unworthy i don't think you stand in much need of that charm mr quack remarked another of more than ordinary rank who was also present then they really got practically no money from you by no means i admitted it was never literally stipulated and whatever of wealth he possessed this person carries in a concealed spot beneath his waist belt 
for even to these virtuous sire i did not deem it expedient to reveal the fact that in reality it is hidden within the sole of my left sandal i congratulate you he said with lavish refinement ben and the butterman can be very bland and persuasive could you tell me as a matter of professional curiosity what first put you on your guard in this person's country i replied there is an apt saying the sagacious bird does not build his nest twice in the empty soup terrain and by observing closely what has gone before one may accurately conjecture much that will follow after it may be that out of my insufferable shortcomings of style and expression this answer did not convey to his mind the logical sequence of the warning yet it would have been more difficult to show him how everything arose from the faultlessly balanced system of the heroic wee chung or the exact parallel lying between the ill-clad outcast who demanded a portion of tobacco and the cheerfully unassuming stranger who had in his possession a larger accumulation of money than he could conveniently disperse in such a manner i took leave of the station and those connected with it after directing that the share of the spoil which fell by the law of this island to my lot should be sold and the money of exchange faithfully divided among the virtuous and necessitous of both sexes the higher officials each waved me pleasantly by the hand according to the striking and picturesque custom of the land while the lesser ones stood around and spoke flattering words as i departed as honourable a small piece of all right astute ancient male fowl ah and the like with repeated assurances that however ineptly the adventure may at the time appear to be tending as regards the essentials of true dignity and an undeviating grasp upon articles of negotiable value nothing of a regrettable incident need be feared kong ho end of letter eight Letter nine of the Mirror of Kong Ho by Ernest Brahma. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Letter nine concerning the proverb of the highly accomplished horse, the various perils to be encountered in the beneath parts, the inexplicable journey performed by this one, and concerning the obscurity of the witchcraft employed. Venerated sire among these islanders there is a proverb do not place the cart or card the two words having an identical purport and both signifying the inscribed tablet of viands prepared for a banquet before the horse doubtless the saying first arose as a timely rebuke to a certain barbarian emperor who announced his contempt for the intelligence of his subjects by conferring high mandarin rank upon a favorite steed and ceremoniously appointing it to be his chancellor but from the narrower moral that an unreasoning animal is out of place and even unseemly in the entertaining hall or council chamber the expression has in the course of time taken a wider application and is now freely used as an insidious thrust at one who may be suspected of contrariness of character of confusing issues or of acting in a vain or illogical manner i had already preserved the saying among other instances of foreign thought and expression which i am collecting for your dignified amusement as it is very characteristic of the wisdom and humour of these outer lands the imagination is essentially barbaric a horse doubtless well groomed richly caparisoned and as intellectual as the circumstances will permit but inevitably an animal of degraded attributes and untraceable ancestry a horse reclining before a lavishly set out table and considering well of what dish it shall next partake could anything it appears be more diverting truly to our more refined outlook the analogy is lacking both in delicacy of wit and in exactitude of balance but to the grosser barbarian conception of what is gravity removing it is irresistible i am however reminded of the saying by perceiving that i was on the point of recording certain details of recent occurrence without first unrolling to your mind 
the incidents from which it has arisen that the person who is now communicating with you is no longer reposing in the capital but spending a period profitably in observing the habits of those who dwell in the more secluded recesses on the outskirts of the island this reversal of the proper sequence of affairs would doubtless strike those around as an instance of setting the banquet before the horse without delay then to pursue the allusion to its appropriate end i will return as it may be said to my nose-bag at various points about the streets of the capital there are certain caverns artificially let into the bowels of the earth to which any person may betake himself upon purchasing a printed sign which he must display to the guardian of the gate once within the underneath most parts he is free to be carried from place to place by means of the trains of carriages which i have already described to you until he would return to the outer surface when he must again display his talisman before he is permitted to pass forth nor is this an empty form for upon an occasion this person himself witnessed a very bitter contention between a keeper of the barrier and one whose token had through some cause lost its potency in the company of the experienced i had previously gone through the trial without mischance so that recently when i expressed a wish to visit a certain palace and was informed that the most convenient manner would be to descend into the nearest cavern i had no reasonable device for avoiding the encounter nevertheless enlightened sire i will not attempt to conceal from your omniscience that i was by no means impetuous towards the adventure owing to the pugnacious and unworthy suspicion of those who direct their destinies i have not yet been able to penetrate the exact connection between the movements of these hot smoke chariots and the unseen forces to a person whose chief object in life is to avoid giving offence to any of the innumerable demons which are ever on the watch to revenge themselves upon our slightest indiscretion this uncertainty opens an unending vista of intolerable possibilities as if to emphasize the perils of this overhanging doubt the surroundings are ingeniously arranged so as to represent as nearly as practicable the terrors of the beneath world both by day and night a funereal gloom envelops the caverns the pathways and resting-places are meagre and so constructed as to be devoid of attraction or repose and by a skilful contrivance the natural atmosphere is secretly withdrawn and a very acrimonious sulphurous haze driven in to replace it in sudden and unforeseen places eyes of fire open and close with disconcerting rapidity and even change colour in vindictive significance wooden hands are outstretched as in unrelenting rigidity against supplication or divining the unexpressed thoughts inexorably point as one gazes still deeper into the recesses of the earth while the air is never free from the sounds of groans shrieks the rattling of chains dull hopeless noises beneath one's feet or overhead and the hoarse wordless cries of despair with which the attending slaves of the caverns greet the distant clamour of every approaching fire chariot admittedly the intention of the device is benevolently conceived and it is strenuously asserted that many persons of corrupt habits and ill-balanced lives upon waking unexpectedly while passing through these beneath parts have abandoned the remainder of their journey and escaping hastily to the outer air have from that time onwards led a pure and consistent existence but on the other foot those who are compelled to use the caverns daily freely confess that the surroundings do not in any material degree purify their lives or tranquillize the nature of their inner thoughts in this emergency i did not neglect to write out a diversity of charms against every possible variety of evil influence and concealing them lavishly about my head and body i presented myself with the outer confidence of a person who is inured to the exploit 
Doubtless thereby being mistaken for one of themselves in the obscurity, I received the inscribed safeguard without opposition, and even an added sum in copper pieces, which I discreetly returned to the one behind the shutter, with the request that he would honourably burn a few joss-sticks or sacrifice to a trivial amount to the success of my journey in such a manner i reached an awaiting train and taking up within it a position of retiring modesty i definitely committed myself to the undertaking at the next tarrying place there entered a barbarian of high-class appearance and being by this time less assured of my competence in the matter unaided both on account of the multiplicity of evil omens on every side and the perverse impulses of the guiding demon whereby at sudden angles certain of my organs had the emotion of being left irrevocably behind and others of being snatched relentlessly forward i approached him courteously behold i said many thousand li of water both fresh and bitter flow between the one who is addressing you and his native town of yin ping where the tablets at the street corners are as familiar to him as the lines of his own unshapely hands for as it is truly said does the starling know the lotus roots or the pomfret read its way by the signs among the upper branches of the pines out of the necessities of his ignorance and your own overwhelming condescension enlighten him therefore whether the destination of this fire chariot by any chance corresponds with the inscribed name upon this talisman thus adjured the stranger benevolently turned himself to the detail and upon consulting a book of symbols he expressed himself to this wise that after a sufficient interval i should come into a certain station called in part after the title of the enlightened ruler of this island and there abandoning the train which was carrying us i should enter another which would bring me out of the beneath parts and presently into the midst of that palace which i sought this advice seemed good for a reasonable connection might be supposed to exist between a station so auspiciously called and a palace bearing the harmonious name of the gracious and universally revered sovereign consort accordingly i thanked him ceremoniously not only on my own part but also on behalf of eleven generations of immediate ancestors and in the name of seven generations who should come after and he on his side agreeably replied that he was sure his grandmother would have done as much for mine and he sincerely hoped that none of his great-great-grandchildren would prove less obliging in this intellectual manner varied with the entertainment of profuse bows the time passed cordially between us until the barbarian reached his own alighting stage when he again repeated the various details of the strategy for my observance at this point let it be set forth deliberately that there existed no treachery in the advice still less that this person is incapable of competently achieving the destined end of any hazard upon which he may embark when once the guiding signs have been made clear to his understanding whatever entanglement arose was due merely to the conflicting manners of expression used by two widely varying races even as our own proverb says what is only sauce for the cod is serious for the oyster at the station indicated as bearing the sign of the ruler of the country which even a person of little discernment could have recognized by the highly illuminated representation bearing the elusively worded inscription in packets only i left this fire chariot and at once perceiving another in an attitude of departure i entered it as the casual barbarian had definitely instructed and began to assure myself that i had already become expertly proficient in the art of journeying among these beneath regions and to foresee the time not far distant when others would confidently address themselves to me in their extremities so entrancing did this contemplation grow that this outrageous person began to compose the actual words with which he would instruct them as the occasion arose as thus undoubtedly o oh, virtuous and not unattractive maiden this fire engine will ultimately lead your refined footsteps into the street called those who bake food 
Do not hesitate, therefore, to occupy the vacant place by this insignificant one's side. Or, by means, honourable sir, the cross of Charing is in the precisely opposite direction to that selected by this self-opinionated machine for its inopportune destination. Do not rebuke this person for his immoderate loss of mental gravity, for your mistake, though pardonable in a stranger, is really excessively diverting. Your most prudent course now will assuredly be to cast yourself from the carriage without delay, and rely upon the benevolent intervention of a fire-chariot proceeding backwards. Alas, it is truly said, none but sword-swallowers should endeavour to swallow swords, thereby signifying the vast chasm that lies between those who are really adroit in an undertaking, and those who only think that they may easily become so. Presently it began to become deeply impressed upon my discrimination that the journey was taking a more lengthy duration than I had been given to understand would be the case, while at the same time a permanent deliverance from the terrors of the beneath parts seemed to be insidiously lengthening out into a funereal unobtainableness. The point of this person's destination, he had been assured on all hands, was a spot beyond which even the most aggressively assertive engine could not proceed, so that he had no fears of being incapably drawn into more remote places, yet when hour after hour passed and the ill-destined machine never failed in its malicious endeavours to leave each successive tarrying station, it is not to be denied that my imagination dwelt regretfully upon the true civilization of our own enlightened country, where, by the considerate intervention of an all-wise government, the possibilities of so distressing an experience are sympathetically removed from one's path. Thus the greater part of the day had faded, and I was conjecturing that by this time we must inevitably be approaching the barren and inhospitable country which forms the northern limit of the island, when the door suddenly opened and the barbarian stranger whom I had left many hundred li behind entered the carriage. At this manifestation all uncertainty departed, and I now understood that to some obscure end witchcraft of a very powerful and high-caste kind was being employed around me, for in no other way was it credible to one's intelligence that a person could propel himself through the air with a speed greater than that of one of these fire-chariots and overtake it doubtless it was part of this same scheme which made it seem expedient to the stranger that he should feign a part for he at once greeted me as though the occasion were a matter of everyday happening exclaiming genially well mr kong returning and what do you think of the palace it is fitly observed to the earthworm the rice stalk is as high as the pagoda i replied with adroit evasion clearly understanding from his manner that for some reason not yet revealed to me a course of dissimulation was expedient in order to mislead the surrounding demons concerning my movements and by a subtle indication of the face conveying to the stranger an assurance that i had tactfully grasped the requirement and would endeavour to walk well upon his heels, and therefore it would be unseemly for a person of my insignificant attainments to engage in the doubtful flattery of comparing it with the many other residences of the pure and exalted which embellish your capital. Oh, said the one whom I may now suitably describe by the name of Sir Philip, that's rather a useful proverb sometimes. Many people there— at this inquiry I could not disguise from myself an emotion that the person seated opposite was not diplomatically inspired in so persistently clinging to the one subject upon which he must assuredly know that I experienced an all-pervading deficiency. Nevertheless, being by this more fully convinced that the disguise was one of critical necessity, and not deeming that the essential ceremonies of one palace would differ from those of another no matter in what land they stood while through all i read a clear design on sir philip's part that the opportunity was craftily arranged so that i might impress upon any vindictively intentioned spirits within hearing an assumption of high protection 
I replied that the gathering had been one of unparalleled splendour, both by reason of the multitude of exalted nobles present, and also owing to the jewelled magnificence lavished on every detail. Furthermore, I continued, now definitely abandoning all the promptings of a wise reserve, and reflecting, as we say, that one may as well be drowned in the ocean as in a wooden bucket, not only did the sublime and unapproachable sovereign graciously permit me to kowtow respectfully before him, but subsequently calling me to his side beneath a canopy of golden radiance, he conversed genially with me and benevolently assured me of his sympathetic favour on all occasions. This, I conjectured, would certainly overawe any evil force not among the very highest circles while the no less magnanimous prince of the imperial line questioned me with flattering assiduousness concerning a method of communicating with persons at a distance by means of blows or stamps upon a post as far as the outer meaning conveyed itself to me the houses which we build and whether they contained an adequate provision of enclosed spaces in the walls doubtless i would have continued in this praiseworthy spirit of delicate cordiality to an indefinite amount had i not chanced to observe at this point that the expression of sir philip's urbanity had become entangled in a variety of other emotions not all propitious to the scheme so that in order to retire imperceptibly within myself i smiled broad-mindedly remarking that it was well said that the moon was only bright while the sun was hid and that i had lately been dazzled with the sight of so much brilliance and virtuous condescension that there were occasions when i questioned inwardly how much i had really witnessed and how much had been conveyed to me in the nature of an introspective vision it will already have been plain to you o oh my courtly-mannered father that these barbarians are totally deficient in the polite art whereby two persons may carry on a flattering and highly attuned conversation mutually advantageous to the esteem of each without it being necessary in any way that their statements should have more than an ornamental actuality so wanting in this the most concentrated form of truly well-bred entertainment are even their high officials that after a few more remarks to which i made answer in a spirit of skilfully sustained elusiveness the utterly obtuse sir philip said at length excuse my asking mr kong but have you really been to the alexandra palace at all admittedly there are few occasions in life on which it is not possible to fail to see the inopportune or low class by a dignified impassiveness of features an adroitly directed jest or a remark of baffling in consequence but in the face of so distressingly straightforward a demand what cannot be advanced by a person of susceptible refinement when opposed to one of incomparably larger dimensions imprisoned by his side in the recess of a fire chariot which is leaping forward with uncurbed velocity and surrounded by demons with whose habits and partialities he is unfamiliar in a manner of expressing the circumstance i replied it is not to be denied that this person's actual footsteps may have imperceptibly been drawn somewhat aside from the path of his former design yet inasmuch as it is truly said that the body is in all things subservient to the mind and is led whithersoever it is willed and as your engaging directions were scrupulously observed with undeviating fidelity it would be impertinently self-opinionated on this person's part to imply that they fail to guide him to his destination thus for all ceremonial purposes it is permissible conscientiously to assume that he has been there i am afraid that i must not have been sufficiently clear said sir philip did you miss the train at king's cross by no means i replied firmly pained inwardly that he should cast the shadow of such narrow incompetence upon me seeing this machine on the point of setting forth on a journey even as your overwhelming sagacity had enabled you to predict would be the case i embarked with self-reliant confidence good lord murmured the person opposite beginning to manifest an excess of emotion for which i was quite unable to account 
then you have been in this train your actual footsteps i mean mr kong not your ceremonial abstract subliminal ego ever since to this i replied that his words shone like the moon at midnight with scintillating points of truth adding however as the courtesies of the occasion required that i had been so impressed with the many-sided brilliance of his conversation earlier in the day as to render the flight of time practically unnoticed by me but did it never occur to you to ask at one of the stations he demanded still continuing to wave his hands incapably from side to side any of the porters would have told you kong li heng the founder of our line who was really great has been dead eleven centuries and no single fact or incident connected with his life has been preserved to influence mankind i replied how much less will it matter then even in so limited a space of time as a hundred years in what fashion so insignificant a person as the one before you acted on any occasion and why therefore should he distress himself unnecessarily to any precise end in this manner i sought to place before him the dignified example of an imperturbability which can be maintained in every emergency and at the same time to administer a plain yet scrupulously sheathed rebuke for the inauspicious manner in which he had first drawn me on to speak confidently of the ceremonies of the royal palace and then held up my inadequacy to undeserved contempt had not rejoiced my imagination and i was still uncertain how much to claim and whether perchance even yet a more subtle craft lay under all well in any case when you go back you can claim the distinction of having been taken seven times around london although you can't really have seen much of it said sir philip this is a circle train at this assertion i looked up though admittedly curved a little about the roof the chariot was in every essential degree what we should pronounce to be a square one whereupon feeling at length that the involvement had definitely passed to a point beyond my contemptible discernment i spread out my hands acquiescently and affably remarked that the days were lengthening out pleasantly in such manner i became acquainted with the one sir philip and thereby in a somewhat circuitous line the original purpose which possessed my brush when i began this inept and commonplace letter is reached for the person in question not only lay upon himself the obligation of leading me by the strings of his apron garment in the characteristic and fanciful turn of the barbarian language to that same palace on the following day but thenceforth gracefully affecting to discern certain agreeable virtues in my conversation and custom of habit he frequently sought me out more recently on the double plea that they of his household had a desire to meet me and that if i spent all my time within the capital my impressions of the island would necessarily be ill-balanced and deformed he advanced a project that i should accompany him to a spot where as far as i was competent to grasp the idiom he was in the habit of sitting doubtless in an abstruse reverie in the country and having assured myself by means of discreet innuendo that the seat referred to would be adequate for this person also and that the occasion did not in any way involve a payment of money i at once expressed my willingness towards the adventure with numerous expressions of unfeigned regret from a filial point of view that the voice of one of the maidens of the household lifted in the nature of a defiance against this one to engage with her in a two-handed conflict of hong pong obliges him to bring this immature composition to a hasty close kong ho End of letter nine.